Hi, my name is Denis Fyodorov and in this video I will share a bunch of tips or rules on Russian pronunciation, stressing and intonation. These tips involve many frequently asked questions I am being asked. Also, I am going to tell some interesting things about Russian language and its real-life usage. So, in this video you will learn something new, that's for sure. To lay the foundation for the future tips and information, let's start from these three simple stressing rules. One word may have only one stressed syllable, only vowels can be stressed. If there is only one vowel in a word, put stress on it. They work the same as in English. There is a word, only one part of it is under stress and other parts are not emphasized. Only vowels can be under stress, and if there is a short word with only one vowel, it means that it has one syllable that is under stress. Pretty simple and straightforward rules. Knowing this, let's proceed to the following. All syllables except for the stressed syllable are pronounced with less emphasis. This is a very simple rule from the first look, but with a very broad background, so it's important. Let me explain you something. First, it means that in a word there is a syllable that is under stress. Голова, head. It is pronounced as голова, with the last letter A under stress. When you are a beginner and learning to read, you read by syllables. And reading by syllables means that every vowel is under stress. Go, lo, va. Yes, three syllables. Go, lo, va. But when you become fluent, you can read it in one whole. Galava. And here is where our tip starts to work. You emphasize one syllable and, according to our rule, pronounce other syllables with less emphasis. In English you also do this the same way. And when you start doing that, like in English, and you like tire two more advanced set of pronunciation rules start working. When reading by syllables you pronounce uh, sounds of letters and very few very basic pronunciation rules work. But when you become fluent, pronunciation rules start, wor uh, start working at full strength. So, голова – example. Here starts to work another rule. Unstressed O is pronounced as A in pre-stressed position. That's how it is said in textbook. To know what it means on the human language, we remove the confusing part and get this. Unstressed O is pronounced as A. Now it's clear. So basically, голова is pronounced as голова, голова, all a, because according to a rule, unstressed o is pronounced as a. There is a bunch of similar rules, but the example with o is the most common. Another similar rule is unstressed е is pronounced as e, цветок, flower. The last syllable is under stress, so we say цветок here. And here comes up the next tip in addition to these rules. Pronounced unstressed vowels shorter and stressed vowels longer. So in голова you quickly move through all syllables, but hold a little on stressed one. Голова. So you pronounced unstressed vowels as short vowels and stressed vowels as long vowels. There are also some rules like this uh, in Russian, but the thing is when you start emphasizing one part, the stressed part of the word, but skim over all other parts of the word, you will follow some of these rules automatically. However, you will not follow other rules. It depends on your native language. So usually those rules that do not coincide with your native rules, you break them. Those rules that coincide with the native rules, you follow them. The good news is that quite many patterns in Russian and English are the same, but quite many are not. 
that's why you hear Russians uh, speaking with accent and we Russians, we hear English speakers speaking with a big accent too, unless they are uh, specially trained to fix that. So some pronunciation uh, training is always highly recommended. How these rules appear? These rules appear not as a result of some linguists working in the dungeons and trying to invent some new evil rules uh, to make our life harder. No, these rules are just a result of the development of the language, the result of its evolution. If common people do not like how the word is pronounced, they mangle it in a way it would be easier to pronounce. And even such bad and dangerous people as linguists can't stop them doing so. That's why in Russian, English and other languages many words are not pronounced exactly the same as they are written. Let's go forward. Another rule, as it is said in textbook, letters Ye, Yo, I, Yu, Ya, Mekki Znak palatalize the preceding consonant unless it has no palatalized counterpart. On practice, this uh, rule means that these letters palatalize the preceding consonant. Palatalization is a very important thing in Russian and it simply means that a letter, consonant letter, hard by default, stops being hard and becomes soft. And we even have a special sign for palatalization soft sign. And we even have the counter sign to prevent palatalization, hard sign. So, by default, consonants are hard. So, let's take letter T with the original sound T, t and try to read it with the consonants above. It would be T, 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 so, these vowels and soft sign changed the original sounding of T and made it ch, ch, the softer variant. Feel the difference. So, if we take a vowel A that is not in our rules list, we pronounce it with T as TA. ta. So, the original hard sound of the stayed the same. On practice, this rule means that if you meet the above listed vowels, do not do any pronunciation tongue twisting, but change the sounding of the preceding consonant on a soft variant of it. The next quite similar rule is when two consonants are next to each other, the first changes according to the second. It means that on practice you will meet sometimes combinations of consonants that are hard to pronounce together. So, in such cases, uh, the second one is more important than the first one in these combinations. Three words. Средний, скучный, легкий. Средний. Dn, dn is a pretty hard combination of consonants to pronounce. Naturally, it is hard to pronounce it fluently and you have to make a stop to pronounce this uh, snuffling combination, the N, inside the word. So, we take our rule that the second consonant is more important and I pronounce the in средний, softer. So, it's not a pure the now, but something like the with a soft sign. It's not a vivid example, but a common one. Средний, средний. Now two vivid examples. Легкий. It is naturally hard to pronounce it легкий. So in Russian we replace the G on H and pronounce it легкий. Легкий. It's because if something is hard to pronounce, then people will find an easier way. They do this and it becomes a common variant, but writing stays the same. That's how in all languages pronunciation of many words has become different from their writing variants. So you pronounce not легкий, but легкий. Скучный. I am using this example for a reason, because in Russian you can hear this very common word as скучный and 
скучный. According to dictionary and rules, we pronounce it as скучный. So, I am teaching you to pronounce this as скучный. However, the youngest generation in general and me, my friends, we mostly pronounce it as скучный. We do it wrong. So, I have noticed long ago that the older generation pronounced this word as скучный and the younger скучный. And, by the way, I made a small experiment and asked several people how to pronounce this word. The first their answer was скучный, but after some consideration they pronounced it скучный. I pronounced it скучный because of personal opinion that if a word could be easily pronounced according to its original writing form, uh, that's be it. So, I pronounce Легкий as легкий, because to pronounce it as легкий will be a pure tongue twisting. But to pronounce скучный exactly as it is written is nothing hard at all. So, I will pronounce it as it is written, according to my beliefs. But many others out there pronounce in the same way without any beliefs, uh, they just do. So, in Russian you will meet this word in two variants. The variant скучный is the proper one, according to dictionaries, and the скучный variant is a common sense variant. Now, one thing. So, in Russian there are several obsolete rules that still work. The most frustrating is the following. Like, you probably do not know that in Russian кофе, coffee, is masculine. It is he. However, according to common rules, it is it. But it is he because of some very old rules when this word just appeared in Russian. So, in Russian we say this coffee, he is very good. It is the proper variant. However, less educated people, many common people and people like me, you know, like rioters for common sense, would say this coffee, it is very good. But there are pseudo-intelligent people who are not able to see those mistakes, but able to see only obvious ones. So, if you in their presence uh, say that coffee is it, like give it to me please, they will correct you and tell that coffee is he, to show their intelligence and to feel better about themselves. But you know, soon we, people who are for the common sense, will win and coffee will be eat. Right now, we may sometimes meet it mentioned as eat in dictionaries, but soon it will be eat in all sources and the masculine variant will be obsolete. And uh, as it happened to metro, metro or subway, uh, which was also he 50 years ago. But now coffee is still mainly he and it is the proper variant, so if you download my rule about Russian genders, it will not work for coffee. Coffee is an exception for now. Well, enough talking, the next tip. Another stressing rule, letter Yo is always stressed. So, if you meet a Yo letter in a word, put a stress on it. Simple rule. All these words you see on the screen, they contain your. And in each one of them, your is under stress. That's simple. However, not so simple in practice, because in Russian, your letter has a bad fortune. So, in real life, you will see words with these letters mostly written this way. The thing is that in Russian, there is a tendency to write year instead of your. The reason of this fact lies in history and reforms, but the thing is that officially you are allowed to decide for yourself whether to use this letter in writing or not. For more profound people, there are recommendations when to, when to use it, but in practice most people don't use it. But your is pronounced. It may be written as yeah, but pronounced as your. Personally, me, uh, I use your always except for typing on phone keyboard. Uh, there I type yeah instead of your. 
and generally all Russian native speakers do not use your in writing in most cases. As for you, uh, as Russian learners, you should always write your in every situation. After you learn Russian, you may stop writing it, but if I were you, I would write it always. Now a tip on Russian intonation. I know for sure that there are people out there studying Russian intonation to speak better, like on what part of the sentence to put an emphasis or when to lower your voice. And the only thing I can say to them is that in Russian we have the same intonation as in English. Right now I am speaking to you in English, but if I spoke in Russian, I would, would, uh, I would be talking exactly the same as in English. I would be just using Russian words. That's it. No change in intonation. However, I have one intonation tip for you. Uh, look at this example. Ты был в России? Have you been to Russia? Ты был в России? You have been to Russia. If you look at the Russian sentences, you would notice that the difference between the question and assertion is in the sign in the end of the sentence. So, in Russian we use intonation to ask, while in English the structure of the sentence can tell you whether that is a question or assertion. In Russian only intonation can tell that in speech. So, in Russian when asking something, be sure that you use the asking intonation. And this intonation is the same as in English. Another Russian speaking tip. It's about stressing. Sometimes there happen situations when you do not know where to put an emphasis in a word. Usually English speakers have this subconscious pronunciation pattern. They put the first syllable under stress. Uh, this pattern works good in English, but in Russian you would be wrong most often. Of course, in Russian there are a lot of words where the first syllable is under stress, but in fact you should not put a stress on the first syllable if you do not know the proper stressing. So, no first syllable stressing pattern. So, in such situations, emphasize the center of the word. This way you have a bigger chance to guess how the word is stressed. Another thing. In Russian there is a common situation when two same consonants follow one another. Especially it often happens with adjectives. Современный, modern. What to do in such situations when there are two same consonants one after another? Uh, to pronounce them, you merge them into one consonant and pronounce like it is one consonant there. You do not pronounce N twice. So, it is not pronounced as современный. You pronounce it once. Современный. Современный. One consonant with one sound. And last but not least, three letters. R, U, Ş. These letters have no analogical sounds in English, so they should be learned from scratch. So, I mean, R is not like R in rest. On this channel I have pronunciation of Russian vowels and pronunciation of Russian consonants videos where these letters are explained. Please learn how to pronounce them, because most of even advanced Russian learners pronounce these letters on a poor level. So. That's it. Uh, these were tips on Russian pronunciation, stressing and intonation. And I hope this video has made your understanding of Russian language better. So that's it. The end.